Not too long ago, fellow movie talker 3C hit 100,000 subscribers. And so because of that, I decided to interview him for this channel. We ended up talking for about 50 minutes long. We talked about his story, how to get started on YouTube, our tips, how to kind of like explode and get growth. We talked about so much that I realized I could actually break it up into multiple different videos. This is the first part and we're gonna share 3C story of how he kind of started his channel and how he had doubts almost quit at certain points in times and how he turned that into a full-time job on YouTube talking about movies. Here you go. So what was the transition to you starting on YouTube? Okay, so of course, uh, I don't know if you remember this channel, but this was one of my first introductions to the movie space in YouTube. It was a, a guy named Peter Rollis and he had a show called Movie Buzz. Have you ever heard of that? I don't think so. I don't think Maybe I caught that one. They, yeah, it was in the very early inception of YouTube. I, I don't even think the man was getting paid for it at that time because YouTube didn't have, uh, you know, paying people on the platform yet. But he basically had a weekly 10 minute show where he round up the news that was going on. and. That that was that was my addiction. It was you know just just watching the news, consuming it, enjoying it. Uh, you grow up, and then you start seeing all these other people talk, like Collider, AMC Movie Talk, or John Campy, and people like that. And at a certain point, you just want your voice heard. You hear other people's opinions all your life. You're like, I, I, I got some ideas too. I yeah. got some thoughts on this. I I kind of want to be heard. Maybe that's egotistical or selfish to say that, but. It's just natural. You watch that stuff because you have your own opinion. And the thing that set it off for me was Batman vs. Superman. Mm -hmm. If you remember when that movie was coming out, it, the the community as movie fans was all over the place. Whether we loved this thing, we hated this thing, were we excited for it? How was it going to go? And it, it was just this sort of bottle cap thing where I just had so much thought, so many things I wanted to say that I felt like I was going to explode if I didn't. That I just finally said, you know what? I'll put a video of myself talking about it. We'll just see how it goes. How bad can it be? I feel like I can be like these guys. <laughs> yeah. All they do is talk. It's not that hard. And then <laughs> it is. you find out it's, <laughs> it's way hard. harder than you think. It is very hard. So that's kind of what set it off for me. It's just uh, you get to a point in the community where there's something you're just that interested about. Superheroes and, and geek culture that you just want your voice heard. And Batman vs. Superman was it for me. Did you have a setting off point like that? Um... So, I mean, everything you said kind of tracks pretty well exactly with my line of thinking for years <laughs> of, like, watching those same exact channels and Collider John Campy and be like, I've got thoughts, too. And one of the ones I had was I had this active thought of, like, being in their comment section thinking, wouldn't it be cool to start the conversation that drives the comment section? That was, like, one yeah. for me, like, the whole idea of having an ongoing conversation was just very interesting to me. And... Uh, so then I had all these false starts when Star Trek Into Darkness came out. I put up a review and now you see me. And then <laughs> like when Gotham started and like three years of false starts. And then mine was a different movie that year that was equally volatile hey. on the Internet. Ghostbusters. Um, oh, Ghostbusters yes. came out. And the reason I mine was almost like the counterbalance because it was like you had these people like this movie's ruining my childhood and then you have the <laughs> other side like that's just because you're sexist and I was just like I thought it was a mediocre okay movie I didn't hate it like I was just kind of like right there in the middle and so that was kind of interesting to me that it was just that it wasn't an interesting opinion was what was interesting to me so I was like I think I'll throw up a review I assumed I would stop doing it two weeks later I didn't here I am three and a half no, years later no. still doing it and so that's the crazy part is you never know which one of those decisions changes mm. your life oh yeah you don't you know you don't know what movie review is going to blast you off into the known or in, into the wider space mm, yeah and that was I think the, the thrill of it you know and like there's like a gambling addiction to doing this thing you know it's just because every video you put is a gamble it's you're rolling the dice and hoping that the YouTube algorithm or whatever it is that makes videos yep. pop up in people's recommendation hits to you and if that even happens a little bit from you're used to 10 20 views and all of a sudden you got 70 100 views yeah it was like hitting the lottery to you. It right. felt amazing. And I think it was those little steps that kept us going. But unlike you, I, I, I had my faults. It, and I, so I did it for like a good six months. And I was just reviewing movies. You know, I, I even thought I was creative. I created my own rating system because I didn't want to just do the whole, oh, 10 out of 10 or an A or, you know, because it, it just feels overdone at that point. Because mm -hmm. you have to remember, this was 2016. There was movie channels of the plethora there was one every day coming mm -hmm. up so it was like how how are you gonna stand out and so 
I created the name 3C Films because I was going to base the movies off the three types of moviegoers I thought were out there, the casual, the cinephile, the critic. And that's kind of how I review them. You know, I tell you, a casual person like your mom who doesn't watch all that much movies would probably like it this much. A cinephile who watches the big blockbusters or the occasional art film here and there will like it this much. And the critic who's, you know, Jojo Rabbit, Lighthouse, those type of movies would probably like it that much. And that's what I based it off. I thought I was creative, but it really wasn't enough. And it yeah. was just months and almost a year of just getting 50, 20 views. And a lot of those views, if I'm being honest, was myself just refreshing the page, <laughs> seeing like, did I get more views? Not knowing I was <laughs> adding to my own views by accident. This, my and, trick was to get my mother to also click the refresh button. So <laughs> both of us are do, driving up the numbers. And, and so it just led to me eventually going, this is a silly dream. I, I really thought I could be a YouTuber. I thought I could be a Jeremy Johns or a Stuckman just sitting on my butt talking movies and then earning the cash doing what I want. It, it really wasn't working. And a, I was also a full-time student in college. Uh, and I had a full I, a job to pay for my college and my uh, rent because I was living by myself at that time in a very small, crappy studio apartment. It, it just got very depressing. I felt like a loser. I was like, this is, I'm making videos on the internet talking about superhero movies. I'm trying to get a degree. And I just, yeah. it was just very discouraging. So I, I had given up for about, I don't know, I'd say two or three months. And I think that was around the time that you were building up the fan, uh, other movie reviewers to, to do stuff. And I, I felt like I missed out on that. I was like, oh, dang, I should have kept going. Maybe because... It was sometimes you do it alone, you know, right. you, you have no one else encouraging you. And if I think I would have had you say, hey, you want to join in on this? I would have felt encouraged to probably keep going at that time. But what ultimately brought me back to it, because obviously I'm here, <laughs> um, was just you just find the love of movies again. Right. It's just something that doesn't die. You, you know, as a movie fan, you just will endlessly love these things. And even if my channel now died... I wouldn't stop going to the theater. Right. I wouldn't stop appreciating things. And, and it was just that, that I built up that 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 um, bottle up feeling to talk about movies again. And so I was like, I'll give it another shot. That was it for me. <laughs> I've had a few people message me being like, oh, I'm real, I'd love to do what you do, talking movies too much. Oh, that's, that's so me. I love all of that. Um, I hear sometimes YouTube doesn't pay the best though. And so it's not worth it. Like, cause it doesn't necessarily pay the best. And like, I hear that and I'm like, just, just don't even start. Like okay. if part of your starting motivation is the money down the line, just don't start. It's not, that's not like you have to be willing to do it for free for a yeah. long time, just cause you love it. This is just what you do. If you, if any part of it is that you need to make money on the front end, it's the wrong path. This is, is. not, cause it is brutal. And it is like, yeah. you'll get, you'll put so much effort into something and get no reward. And then yeah. the thing that you think is crap, YouTube's like, let's just throw that one out there. <laughs> and promotes it like crazy. Like the yeah. first, uh, for a long time, the, the video on my channel that had the most views was my trailer reaction for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And I kid you not, I had just done a live stream, picked up my phone and went, oh, the trailer dropped for it. I didn't have time to do all like the setup and everything for it. And so I did a trailer reaction where I had two phones and I held one up to the camera and I held one like this and watched <laughs> it. That's how I did this video. And for a long time, that was the most vi viewed video on my channel. It's like, it's the worst video on my channel. Like outrageously bad and YouTube promoted That's that one hilarious. and then you'll spend hours and hours and hours working on something and like it flops that, hard. It's and brutal. It hurts. Mm -hmm. It hurts when a video flops, especially when you put a lot of time and effort into it in your soul and then you just see no return. Mm -hmm. It, it, it just it's so crushing and it's part of the reason why sometimes you know this job can be very difficult and you just sit there staring at the wall like what am I doing? It's yeah. like even now at 100K, I, I don't feel secure. And right, that's not no. to discourage any future people out there who want to do it. It's just it's a longer journey than you think. Right. I really thought at 10K, once I hit 100K, I'm set. I could start picking out my mansion. I'll have a Tesla. <laughs> I'll be good. I mean, I won't have to worry. I could, you know, just bump out these random videos and people will just watch because it's me and it's, it's not it's not the case at all <laughs> like i i still worry every month if i'm gonna have bread on the table to, <laughs> to yeah. feed myself mm -hmm. and my lifestyle here but along with that like you were saying don't get in it for the money because uh i'm not gonna talk about how much we make on here we are full time here i, I am I, I think you are as well right mm -hmm. sean yeah. yeah i've been full time uh, since february yeah 
Yeah, it, 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 a lot of that just has to do with where we live. Texas isn't yes. that expensive of a place to live. Mm-hmm. The housing is relatively nice. You know, other than that, I mean, I'm not making more than a regular teacher's salary exactly. working on YouTube. Exactly. Here. That That's how I feel. So you're not going to be, you know, making lawyer money, doctor money. You're going to be comfortable, but you're still going to have to manage and right. grind to mm-hmm. keep that comfortable lifestyle, I, in my opinion. It's just like, just, it's like... In our corner of YouTube, I mean, you know, there, obviously there's people that are much larger than this, oh, but yeah. our little corner, we're you know, kind of the top people that started around a certain point in time. And like you said, we make about what a teacher makes. Like it's in that ballpark, which is something you can live off of, yeah. but that is not the glamorous life. And it would like, it is not enough <laughs> to live off of if we lived in LA, like it, like oh, we just couldn't do oh, it. Oh no. Um, we, and, I'd have 10 roommates. That's how much it has yeah, to be. <laughs> and like for me, uh, the reason I could do this because my wife has a full time job. And so between the two of us, then we like we're having a great, like fantastic Same. couple of years. But like, you know, you just have to think about it in that. Re- like we've been working hard, hustling, learning, growing. And still, it's not like just money's just pouring in or anything. Like sometimes people tr- like I talk, talk to me like that, like, oh, I live in the dream, the crazy, glamorous life. Like, eh, you know, I, I've got a fantastic life. I, glamorous oh. is not the word I would use for it, though. But so let's kind of make that transition. That's your story. Okay. Kind of, uh, um, you, you came back. What kind of yeah. kind of changed that it went from thirty views, fifty views to hundred thousand subscribers? That's a pretty big so, little uh, yeah, change so, there. So the big there. So one thing, and maybe Sean has talked about this in the past, and then specifically if you're trying to do movie reviews. Uh, you learn things that can maybe put you a little forward. There's websites out there like advancedscreening.com or GoFobo. These are websites where any any old schmo can go out, sign up, and get advanced screenings in your area if they're available. I found out about that, and it kind of put me a little ahead because you would see the movies ahead of when most people got released because I was the guy who was going Friday night, Thursday night, and then reviewing a movie. And you kind of know in the movie space, that's a little too late to review sometimes, yeah. especially if you're a small channel. So getting that extra step to doing the research of like, how can I see movies early? What's what's what I can do? And that helped me out a bit. But there's one thing I want to stress, especially in the movie community. If you only do movie reviews, you're not going to grow yeah. at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, seriously. If you think, oh, I could just put my thoughts on Jojo Rabbit. I could just put my thoughts on Charlie's Angels. You're not going anywhere. You're going to move like a snail even slower than that just because we're in that time where it's just too many movie channels. It's a saturated market and you you point out like, oh, but what about Jeremy and Chris Stuckman? All they do is movie reviews. They've been doing it for 12, 10 years. They started it. They were the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They started it. So they get a pass. They're the exception. And you also have to wonder, it's 10 years of being on YouTube. People grow up with these guys and Mm -hmm. listening to their opinion – you kind of grow a bond with them and only trust their opinion. That's why they still can review a small lighthouse movie and end up getting close to a million views just because that it's that those 10 years of collecting people. If you're just starting today, you kind of have to get the idea of movie reviews out of your, of your mind. If you're not creative enough or, or not even creative enough, just thoughtful to do something different. There's just no room for you to grow. And that's what it did for me was one day I went to go see hereditary. I went with my with my girlfriend who I live with and stuff, and we went to see Hereditary. I really liked it. I liked the horror genre. And I came out, and I was raving about it. But my girlfriend was just like, I have no idea what I just watched. I, I don't get it. I don't know what's happening. And I, I sat there, and I explained the movie and the hints and the little clues that you could have gotten to, to what it was aiming towards. And then I thought to myself, I wonder if other people are going to be as confused as my girlfriend was about this movie. And out of nowhere, I just thought... I'll go ahead and do an ending explain. I'll explain what the movie was, see how that goes. So, of course, I waited till the movie was close to release, the Friday, because I don't want to be the a-hole who spoils everything for everybody. <laughs> so, I, I did that. I went to bed, and I woke up with 10,000 views. And that yeah. right there, you jump out of bed yeah. once you see that. You mm-hmm. look at your phone twice, you're like, what? Mm-hmm. You have to remember, I was getting 500, 400 views max if it was a, a lucky break for me to get the movie review out early. 10,000 views, I, I was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I, I was jumping, I, didn't, I wasn't even making money. It wasn't even like I was excited for the money. I was just excited that 10,000 yeah. people clicked on mine. Someone cared, and they actually cared. So, 
Exactly. And then that's kind of just where, you know, I, I got a little bit of the start. It's like, well, I could do Ending Explains. A caution with that, though, because I'll, I'll admit I have stopped doing Ending Explains from here on just because uh, I don't want to bash anybody who does them because I obviously I did them and they helped me out in a weird way in the movie community. I guess it's it's, it's frowned upon or it's, it's just considered cheap fast food content because it really is just... You're just detailing the movie piece by piece, and for some reason, hundreds, thousands of people like to watch that. It got to a point where I realized I wasn't, I wasn't being creative. I wasn't putting no. my full effort into it. it. It felt like I was a machine just cranking these out, going, "Okay, so it starts off like this. By the end, it means this." And I, it's you also have to do this because you like it. Yeah. If I'm making videos I don't like then what's the point of doing this, you know? Do you, do you get that? Like, uh, ever make a type of video that just gets bonkers views that you're like, but I'm not having fun making this content. Yeah, so I haven't, I don't think I've ever gone too far in the, down the path of feeling like, oh man, I don't I don't like this. I think I've pretty well done a good job of stopping before oh, I've, I've had, but I know exactly what you're talking. And, and so I guess the, the one for me was kind of trailer reactions was kind of the, mm -hmm. the junk food content that I've, I've done, a, been a part of a little bit. And uh, like for me, I would never watch anyone else's trailer reaction. Like I don't want to watch you watch a trailer, <laughs> but there's a lot of people to do it. So for me, it's an, just it's an opportunity for me to talk about the movie at the end of it. Do you want to watch me watch the trailer while I kind of go like weird faces and apparently I move my eyebrows weird? I don't, that's <laughs> cool, but I just want to give my thoughts on it. That is something yeah. I'm actually interested in. And then that, that became the easy way to get some views and some subs. And what you win people with is what you win them to. And I went, all right, do I want my whole channel to be built on people that want to watch me react to every single trailer that comes out? Or am I just going to react to the ones that feel on brand that actually have something to say about? Yep. And so that's that's kind of what it, it turned into me. It's like, what are the, I'll react to trailers that I have something to say about. I'm not going to put on a show and behave as if I'm really invested <laughs> in the Little Women trailer or something like that. Like exactly. some random trailer that I, I do not, like just because I know there's a niche audience for it doesn't mean for me that I'm, I just exactly. don't have anything to say about it. Therefore, it's not content that I'm going to do. And then likewise, for me, it's like Marvel rankings are where it's just, you know, teeing off. And mm -hmm. then like I had all these things that people proposed to me, like you should rank all of the Infinity Stones and you should rank them based on. And like I have this huge, massive list of videos that I'm positive would have been hit content. And I just went, for me, I would just be saying crap. Like all the ones that I do, um, even at, like sometimes people might think that, you know, I'm just repeating myself, whatever. I have a thought in my mind that I'm interested in saying yeah. that I'm, I'm or it, like sometimes people pick like to have issue with the fact that I update my rankings every time a new movie comes out. Maybe you're right. May, like, but that's work I'm willing to do because yeah. there's demand and for it's your it. Brand it's too. my brand. Like it's work I'm willing to do. And I like my I, if there was a way I could just update the video and throw a new one in there. I'd prefer to do that. That'd be better for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> if it just kind of kept adding on to the same video and I could just tweak it up, that'd be cool. But it does, that's not how YouTube works. So it's the yeah. work that I'm willing to do. But like, there's all yeah. kinds of stuff that like I just went, I'm not going to just do this empty, empty stuff just because I know people would click on it. Um, yeah, because you, you could fall into that accidental thing where you just become something you're not that proud of. And right. I never wanted to fall in that route because it, I was getting to there with doing my ending explains because they were getting bangers numbers and the higher numbers than I've ever seen. It, it was crazy. And it was nice, but I really was miserable making those content because I felt ashamed. I felt like I wasn't making stuff to be proud of. I, any Anybody could have made a video like that, but I was just the one willing to, to ruin, I guess, my reputation in a way. So... I, I learned from it that I'll do this as long as I'll build an audience off that. Now, what I mean by that is, so I'll do an ending explain, but I got to promise myself the very next day to do a video to show them why they should stay on my channel. Mm -hmm. And that's what you should learn from. So movie reviews will not get you anywhere. But trailer reactions, ending explains, maybe rankings, other videos that just happen to get lots of clicks that are, like Sean said, junk food content, you bring them in but you gotta give them a reason to stay. And so that was that was my experimentation. I would do an ending explain for, I don't know, it was a horror movie that came out, Pet Cemetery. And the very next day I would do 
what I think of the Batman movie coming up. And they would get a different flavor from my channel that I did that. That's what I kind of learned is you use these junk food content to build the audience, but you got to give them a reason to stay. If not, you're just going to build a junk food audience and they're only going to want to watch these lowbrow content like uh, trailer reactions or um, ending explains, which I mean, like Sean said, not to knock on trailer reactions. I just did one this morning for Black Widow, but that's because it's a movie I'm interested in. It's a movie I care about. I'm not going to do Little Woman or or things like that you talk about. So. There are some strategic things to do, and that was mine, was to do any and explains until I felt I had a sizable audience to continue what I wanted to do. And my last Indian and explain was on Child's Play uh, that came out last uh, summer. And that's like kind of I had a lot of those same sorts of feelings of trying to when I realized, OK, comic book content, that's absolutely like where it's at. But I went I like I love that stuff, but I want to be a movie channel. Same. And so how do I have a full spectrum of movie stuff that I cover? And like there's boundaries on that. I'm not an indie guy. <laughs> I'm not an Oscar bait guy. I'll, like I'll cover that a little bit because yeah. I want to have a full kind of flavor sprinkled yeah. in there. But I'm very much kind of blockbuster nerd culture franchises. That's that's who I am. That's what I'm interested in. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that it never got too locked in on yep. just comic booky stuff because that's – I, that would not be a future that would make me happy exactly. of trying to just force myself to come up with Marvel stuff to talk about that isn't stuff I'm actually excited about. Because that is a, a problem I fell into when doing my channel. So like I said, I was doing it in Explains and I would do a different kind of video the next day to show what else I could do on the channel. And one of those videos happened to be there was news on the Child's Play series there. We're going to do a reboot, you know, and... I did that, and for some reason that blew up for me as well. There's a lot of people that wanted that, and that's one of those things. It's a niche market. It's a it's yeah. one of those uh, subjects that just happens to have a huge fan base, but there might not be that many people supplying a demand for that fan base, and Child's mm-hmm. Play turned out to be one of them. There's countless people who, on the daily, search up Child's Play videos, Child's Play news, and I'm a big horror fan, so I got into that. But I did make the mistake of making too much child's play videos where i just gained this only people who wanted to talk about the little killer doll or the horror movie so when i would make a superhero video or i would talk about maybe a little indie movie i'd get no attention i'd get no views because i had built an audience that was used to this specific content so like sean says you don't want to box yourself in to one specific genre because then that's what all you'll be stuck to and it's Mm -hmm. almost like eating the same food every day you don't want to talk about the same thing every day because you'll bore yourself or you make yourself unhappy with the content you're making so you gotta you gotta do those things to differentiate yourself if you've enjoyed this interview i'll be sharing more clips from it over the next week wherever that link is somewhere around here i'll share it with you and then in a couple weeks i'll share the full 50 minute interview thank you so much for watching and keep talking youtube too much